Hey guys, what's up? It's Zoe from Zero Reptiles, and today's video features a special little guest. Um, I'll just show you. a little bit about his enclosure. We did make this enclosure when we got him. Um, it is very much iguana handicapped. Um, so you'll see there's a lot of ramps, especially if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen pictures or if you've seen my blog post um, with the instructions kind of on how we built it and the materials used. Um, I will put a link for that in the description below so you can like go and do a read through see pictures of the building process. Built it right after he had his major accident where he became paralyzed in his back legs and whatnot. Are you eating my hair? So yeah, we were afraid that he would never really have good use of his hind legs and be able to climb very well. He really can't. Um, he could maybe, oh my god, let me shut off my phone. We were afraid that he wouldn't really have good use of his hind legs ever um, and be able to handle just like branches and whatnot because he's very tipsy when he climbs and walks around. Um, hence all of the ramps. We couldn't just do branches. So yeah. By the way, I am on Twitter now. Z-A underscore reptiles. Go give me a follow if you haven't already. Let's get to it. Alright, so we'll just go ahead and start with a view. So top to bottom. Sorry, bottom to top. Here is his enclosure. So you can kind of see this is how we did the lock. We took a piece of wood and then one of those like screw thingies with a hook and what did one that went to the PVC. Open the door so you can see his enclosure. So his enclosure was made from those uh, metal shelving units. So we got one of those from Home Depot and then we took one shelf and put it on normally and then we took another shelf and put it on upside down to kind of create like a base but with like a lip so like you go inside of it you know what I'm saying yeah so we have one shelf normal one shelf flipped upside down and then we put another shelf on the top for somewhere that the lights could sit um, and then we got this bamboo fencing from Home Depot as well and we just went through and cut the amount we needed to fit around the whole entire enclosure as well as the height that we would need. Um, so you are going to need some handy dandy tools for this project. What are you doing, dude? What? So, when we did that, we zip tied them to the shelving unit. You will see there's a lot of zip ties in this project. Um, and then we did the door. So we bought all of these PVC pipes. So we have the corners are these rounded ones. Um, so we have that corner and that corner down there. And then on these we have kind of like those T pieces. Um, so you know we cut all those to fit, yeah, put them together. And then we slid this side over the corner piece for the shelving unit. So you're going to want to do that before you go and put this top piece on and put it all together. And then you put the rest of the door on. And then before we did anything inside, we laid the whole thing down and we glued this plexiglass. Um, it's black sand, so it's a little better than plexiglass. So we laid it down. We used that kind of like sealant glue stuff um, that comes in that weird tube and put that on, left it for the night, and then used these washers to just kind of like make it extra sturdy, extra stuck down to the PVC. So that's what we did for the door. So after that, we were able to move to the inside. So first we did all the shelves and figure out where we wanted the shelves. So at the time we had measured um, from the UVB light down to the shelf to see how far he has done bigger. So I need to drop the shelf a little bit. Such a pretty boy, just chilling. Yes, you. So yes, yeah, so we did those shelves. I'll show you how we attach them over here. So we have the shelf 
And then we have these two blocks of wood on each side to kind of give it support. So what we did, take this off, I can show you. We screwed the shelf down into those blocks of wood. And then we used these pieces, I forget what they're called, um, to screw into those blocks and just to secure them to the bamboo so they're not moving. So all of these shelves are attached that way. I'll show you over here. You can see that this shelf is on those two blocks. And then if I come over to this side, you can see there is another one of those. So that's how all of the shelves are connected. And then we connected all of the ramps. So I actually have these bamboo ramps, They're like mini versions of this fencing. So what we did was, it's held by wire, so we just took, we ended the wire, took the ones off we didn't want, so that was the length that we needed, and then drilled a hole, and you can see we drilled a hole into the shelf, and pulled the wire through, and did it that way. Um, I'll show you over here, here's a good example. So we pulled the wire through, and then rounded it up, so that it was stuck in there. And then these are wood that I wrapped in twine and used hot glue to secure them. It needs to be vacuumed, it's got skin from shedding. Um, and so for those, we angled the ends and then we screwed them into these shelves going this way. So you can't see the screws because they're under the twine. So this one you can kind of see. We screwed it. This one actually you need another little platform for because the shelf was rounded. But so yeah, we screwed that in. Um, down here, this one actually just has a block like the other shelves that it's screwed into. And then we had this flat piece of driftwood we really wanted to use. It was kind of cool. So that's just treated like another shelf. Drilled in. And down here there's another block that these are drilled into. There's more driftwood. So this one's wrapped in twine too because it was too smooth, he can't climb it. So he just thinks it looks cool. So that's wrapped, that's wrapped, that's wrapped. And because he was handicapped, I was scared of him going over. So I braided this thicker twine um, to try to create a barrier. It's kind of flopped over now, but I did that, sewed it on, and they were standing up like that. But he's big enough now that he's good, so they're just kind of flopped to the side, whatever. I can probably take them off. But, and then this one, we just have plants well went through to make it look good so I did that again up here on this one and then this up here I love this I love when he sits on it it's a rare occurrence but it makes him look like an actual iguana um, so this is another piece of driftwood a branch wrapped in twine because it was too slippery and we attach it the same way we did the shelves um, so we use big versions of these things for the shelves we just used a little one for this piece of wood so that was the main part. We had the shelves and the ramps. And then was the fun part. So down here is his water. This whole thing needs to be vacuumed, ignore it. There used to be dirt down here so he could dig. Um, but he just ended up eating it instead. So I took it out. And then he's got some skin because he was shedding. So this is just the base of a planter. And then I took a cat, it's like a cat litter box mat. So it's nice and soft and use the same glue that we used for the door to glue the lex and the PVC to glue that down to make a water bowl. So it's definitely big enough for him. He can fit in it. He's gone poop in it a couple times. He doesn't like to go poop in his enclosure though. And then this tray. So this tray actually comes out. This back piece is on a hinge. So this goes up and down. And this part actually comes out. So we just have this really big piece of tile and we took like garden um, liner, I guess you could call it, I don't remember what it's called, and glued it around so it actually has um, little flaps on the bottom, little tags, thingies. So we glued it onto the um, tile. If we went to the bathroom down here or spilt water, it wouldn't leak out, it would catch in here. Um, we also did use garden liner, this is garden liner. We use garden liner underneath, just since this is just a wire shelf. And look, more zip ties. We zip tied it to the shelf. Totally removable, it's like a tray. 
he has this ladder here so that when he's out he can climb back into his enclosure. Never uses it though. He climbs up that blue bin. So I just have these leaves down here trying to make it look nice. They're kind of coming undone. Talking about shelf details now. Um, we bought this shelving liner. I have it on stuff like the bamboo so that he can grip onto it, climb up um, on the shelves just in case the shelves got messy or he did anything. So they're actually velcroed, so I just take them right off, clean them, put them right back on, whatever I need to do. Alright, so then we have all the fake plants. They came from Joann's and Michael's. The flowers actually came, I think, from Walmart. Um, but yeah, all the fun plants came from Michael's and Joann's with coupons, of course. I think this stuff I got on Amazon a long time ago. So I have these leaves that I stapled onto the shelf to give him a place to hide. So he likes to hide up there and he'll peek his head underneath and just watch you. Well, it's another place to hide so I've been putting his food under here. Normally he has two food bowls. I'll put one here and one up in this corner. I was running late this morning so I just took a giant Tupperware top and filled it with food. As you can see he's eaten most of it. He's just got some pepper left. I'm surprised he didn't eat all the strawberries. So there's more hide there. Another leaf here to hide. It's funny, when he is back here, he'll stick his eye up and he looks like he's in Jurassic Park, just peeking out at you. And then this nice, pretty green hanging down in front of his pool. So starting up at the top, he's just got his baby up there, he's got his giraffe. He also has a chameleon, he's got Pascal from Tangled. Um, I think that's in his travel tub right now, I'm not really sure. Um, he's got his bed, I got this from PetSmart. I've seen a lot of people use these, especially for the bearded dragons. He loves it, he lays in it all the time. Behind there, he's got his water dish. So if he just wants to drink water, which I never see him do, but it's up there so he doesn't have to go all the way down to the bottom. All right, so let's talk about lighting. So I have his UVB right there. It's a mercury vapor bulb, it's a make array. So it's UVB, UVA, and heat combined into one. So this is kind of his basking area. And then I just have a ceramic heat emitter, mostly for nighttime. So it's attached to this thermostat over here. Um, so that will turn on if it gets too cold, so it's good for nighttime. No light, it's awesome. Sometimes I do have another full spectrum up here. The one that I had currently broke, so it doesn't anymore. I do have one of these thermometers here. It's a Therm Pro. I got it on Amazon, so it has the humidity, and the temperature. I did have one here on the top and on the bottom, but the other one stopped working, I think maybe from getting wet. Um, I'm not sure. I meant to check for warranty and call Amazon, but I never did. But this one's held up pretty well. Um, so up here, if I can find it, I just have your typical Zoomed thermometer thing. But he keeps knocking it around. I need to get Velcro so I can stick it up there. So when I moved in, I used to have a lamp here to heat the middle a little bit. And then I had a lamp down on the bottom so that the water wouldn't get too cold. I had a but he never went down to the bottom. And then I got Phoenix and she needed the lamps. So I just took them from in here because he didn't need them anyway. What are you doing? You can't climb on the bed like that. So when I moved into the last apartment, even with those lights, it still felt kind of dark throughout the enclosure. So I just got these rope lights from Home Depot. Yeah, I think I just grabbed them from Home Depot. And again, zip ties. So I use zip ties to string them throughout the enclosure to give it more light, which is especially good in this new room because I have one window and it's facing the house across like five feet away. Not even, it's like three feet away. So I get no sunlight. So... This is perfect, lights it all up. Um, then next to it I have my shelving unit, so I have my spray bottle, um, the water treatment, so the rep to save, his protein, his alfalfa, nail clippers, yada yada. So all of that is right next to it, where his humidifier sits. So I have this rigged up, my dad works at a hospital, so I have a mask and tubing. Um, so normally this would be all plugged in, and it runs up the side here and out the top. He likes to just sit under it. But currently, my humidifier is not working. It's been leaking, which is why it's in a bucket. But we think water has gone inside now. What 
are you doing? Are you sick of the bed? You want to go on the floor? Here, let's put you on the floor. Come here, we'll put you on the floor. Let go of my shorts. Here, go run. Go run. So yeah, it's been leaking. So I think there's a problem. I think it went through the back and now it's just not turning on. So I need to get a new one. So I've just been spraying him with a spray bottle periodically throughout the day. He's been sitting in his tub. So here's kind of the electrical setup. I have one of these Zoom Med timer outlet things. I love this thing because half of them are on a timer, half of them aren't, so it's perfect. Um, and then up here I have my thermostat, which my ceramic heat emitter is connected to. So right now I have it set for 80. So if it gets less than 80, I'll turn on. Um, I usually have it set for like 85, but it doesn't need to turn on because my room's been super hot since it's summer. And then to hold in humidity, I took a shower curtain and, you guessed it, zip tied it. So all around is a shower curtain to hold in water. Um, it is a nice beach scene. You can't really see it just in a room like this. At home, his enclosure was in front of my window, so it kind of lit up. And it was really cool. Like, you could see the beach scene through the bamboo. And it, was, it was awesome. And this is a dimmer that I have attached here. Um, this was for the light that I had down on the bottom. Um, so it wouldn't get too warm because, you know, you go down to get away from heat. I just wanted it to be warm enough that the water wasn't freezing. See? It doesn't use the ladder. I'm so glad I used my PetSmart gift card to buy you a ladder that you don't ever use. And then of course I have my step stool over here because with the wheels so that we can move this thing it's about seven foot tall and I'm about five five so there's no way that I would be able to reach him very well on the top shelf or mess with the lights without a step stool. Let's see, ready? Shortcut. He won't actually ever climb a full ramp He'll climb about halfway and then reach. And you're gonna cheat that one too. Yeah, he needs to lose some of the ramps. You're so cute. Look at you up there. What a sweet boy. Look at you with your iron bag. You're so cute. So yeah, that is Arcadius's custom belt enclosure. Like I said, I'll put my link for my blog post in the description below where I talked about the steps um, and I also added pictures from the building process so you can kind of get a better idea of what we did as well as materials used. Um, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like his enclosure, built your own enclosure. If you built your own enclosure, please tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see it. Tag me in a comment, tag me in the post, message me on my blog, comment here. Tweet me by see I like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos and we'll see you next time.